is my, my grandfather escaped Czechoslovakia back when it was Czechoslovakia. So unlike a lot of, we're called third generation Holocaust survivors because you're the, the third line of those who survived. And um, most families actually have a lot of internalized shame and PTSD and a lot of scarcity thinking um, that's intergenerational because of having been in the camps and having been part of a victimized tribe and all of that went on, especially having Margot as a namesake. Like I think about her all, almost every day. Hmm. Um, you know, when I was thinking, when I was stuck in a corporate job I hated, I often thought like, am I doing justice to her name? Like she hmm. didn't get to live a life. So am I living my life um, in a way that pays homage to what she lost? Uh, it was always on my mind and it, it, it forced me to make meaning in a way that was really helpful. And um, they take you through different concentration camps. And I, I really want to go. I just had a daughter and I, it, one of my goals is to take her with me. Um, but funny enough, my parents went for the first time. Um, they had gone back to where my grandfather grew up, but none of us had gone to Auschwitz. They went recently and um, it ended up being a part of why I left my corporate job. It's, it's our standard, right? It's how you say like, oh, I'm not in it for the money, right? I'm in it because I care. It's actually really freaking detrimental because if you don't have enough money to support your kids or your lifestyle or pay off your loans, like you're going to make bad unethical decisions mm -hmm. because you have to. So I don't know that motherhood ever fits in anyone's life. You just sort of make a choice. It has exploded my world in all the best ways. Um, it, it's definitely, I mean, one of the fears that I had was that it was going to cut my productivity um, mm. and it was going to limit my time. And as a writer and someone who needs, and an introvert who needs like long stretches of uninterrupted time, I was very nervous about what this meant for me. And so you ask, you know, how did it affect my life? I actually think it forced me to up level in a way that I never would have if I didn't have a kid. Like I was looking at my kid and I, I was like, oh shoot, like you are looking to me for behavior. So like, what am I doing in my life that mm. I'm not proud of? Like, I can't tell you to live your life in a way where I'm behaving differently. Like that's not cool. Um, and it, it, it's like a mirror to being your best self in a way that it's like better than an accountability partner. That's how I would <laughs> like, It's not necessarily pleasant, but it's, it's um, important, really, really mm. important. I felt like it forced me to grow um, and have difficult conversations and confront things about my life, like where I was going with my business. And I looked at my boss and my boss's boss, and I was like, I don't want to be you. Like when I look at my trajectory and what I think success looks like and what I would want like my kid to tell her friends or think of me is not that. It just wasn't aligned with who I knew I was inside. And I knew something had to shift. You can't watch the Olympics on ice skating and like get better at ice skating. But if you read a lot, you actually will get better at writing. Um, and so this is one thing that I always tell people who want to improve their writing is this, read people whose writing you respect um, and that you enjoy. And those might not be the same category. So like make sure you read both. Um, because I